Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the muscles of the sole of the foot. To begin with, the muscles of the sole of the foot are arranged in four layers. As you can see in this diagram, here is a first layer of muscle that is the most superficial, followed by the second layer, the third layer and finally the fourth layer of muscle which is the most deep. We will learn about each of these layers in detail. Looking at the muscles of the first layer of the foot, we have the flexor digitorum brevis right here, the abductor hallucis and the abductor digiti minimi. Now the flexor digitorum brevis originates from the medial tubercle of the calcaneus bone as you see right here, the plantar aponeurosis and the medial and lateral intermuscular septa. Now to give you a brief idea of what is a plantar aponeurosis, it is a modification of the deep fascia which covers the sole. It is a thick connective tissue that functions to support and protect the underlying vital structures of the foot. Also to understand what is the medial and lateral intermuscular septum, the plantar aponeurosis that we looked at earlier also has intermuscular septa that extend superiorly through the foot to divide it into medial, central and lateral compartments. So here you can see this is a medial intermuscular septum and here is the lateral intermuscular septum. Now looking at the insertion of the flexor digitorum brevis, the muscle ends in four tendons for the four lateral toes as you can see right here. The tendon divides into two slips opposite to the base of the proximal phalanx as you can see right here, this is the base of the proximal phalanx and it divides into two slips. And finally, it is inserted into the margins of the middle phalanx. So here is the middle phalanx and it's inserted into its margins. Looking at its nerve supply, the flexor digitorum brevis is mainly supplied by the medial plantar nerve that you can see right here. Finally, let's look at the action of the flexor digitorum brevis. In this diagram, you can see these are the metatarsophalangeal joints, these are the metatarsal bones, these are the phalanges. So we have the metatarsophalangeal joints and here is the proximal interphalangeal joints right here. So the function of the flexor digitorum brevis is mainly the flexion of toes at the proximal interphalangeal joints as I showed right here and the metatarsophalangeal joints. Now let's learn about the abductor hallucis muscle that you see right here. The abductor hallucis originates from the medial tubercle of the calcaneus bone, the flexor retinaculum and the deep fascia covering it as well as the medial intermuscular septum as we had seen earlier in a diagram. The abductor hallucis inserts onto the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe as you can see right here. Its nerve supply is similar to that of the flexor digitorum brevis, that is it is supplied by the medial plantar nerve. Finally, the action of this muscle is the abduction of the great toe away from the second toe. Now looking at the abductor digiti minimi muscle that you see right here, it originates from the medial and lateral tubercles of the calcaneus bone the lateral intermuscular septum and the deep fascia covering it. It inserts into the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the little toe right here. The nerve supply is the main trunk of the lateral plantar nerve. So for these two muscles it was a medial plantar nerve but for the abductor digiti minimi it is a lateral plantar nerve. And finally its action is the abduction of the little toe. Now before we move on to the muscles of the second layer of the sole of the foot, let's concise the important points that we learnt under the first layer. So we have three important muscles, the flexor digitorum brevis, the abductor hallucis and the abductor digiti minimi. The flexor digitorum brevis originates from the medial tubercle of the calcaneus bone, the plantar aponeurosis and the medial and lateral intermuscular septa. Looking at its insertion, this muscle ends in four tendons for the lateral four toes. The tendon divides into two slips opposite the base of the proximal phalanx and it is inserted into the margins of the middle phalanx. 
Its nerve supply is by the medial plantar nerve and its action is flexion of toes at the proximal interphalangeal joints and the metatarsophalangeal joints. Moving on to the abductor hallucis, its origin is from the medial tubercle of the calcaneus, the flexor retinaculum, the deep fascia covering it and the medial intermuscular septum. Its insertion is onto the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. It is supplied by the medial plantar nerve and its action is abduction of the great toe away from the second toe. Finally, looking at the abductor digiti minimi, it originates from medial and lateral tubercles of the calcaneum, the lateral intermuscular septum and the deep fascia. It inserts onto the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the little toe and its nerve supply is by the main trunk of the lateral plantar nerve. And finally, its action includes the abduction of the little toe. Next, let's learn about the muscles of the second layer of the foot. So mainly we have four muscles. The first is the flexor digitorum longus. Then we have the flexor digitorum accessorius muscle. Then we have the flexor hallucis longus and the lumbricals. So first let's learn about the flexor digitorum longus muscle. The flexor digitorum longus originates from the posterior surface of the tibia so in this diagram, you can see the tibia, its posterior surface, here is the fibula and here is the foot complex. So the flexor digitorum longus originates from the upper two thirds of the medial part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the soleal line, as you can see right here. The flexor digitorum longus muscle divides into four tendons, as you can see right here. Each of it is inserted into the plantar surface of the distal phalanx of the second to fifth digits, as you can see right here. This muscle is mainly supplied by the tibial nerve. So we know that the movement of the foot upwards is called dorsiflexion and towards the ground is called plantar flexion. So the action of the flexor digitorum longus muscle is the plantar flexion of the lateral four toes and the ankle and it also helps in maintaining the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Next let's look at the flexor digitorum accessorius muscle. This originates from two heads, the medial and the lateral head. The medial head is large and fleshy. It arises from the medial concave surface of the calcaneus the lateral head is smaller and tendinous. It arises from the calcaneus, from the front of the lateral tubercle, as you can see right here. It mainly inserts into the lateral side of the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. So it inserts onto its lateral side. And its nerve supply is mainly from the lateral plantar nerve. We had looked at its diagram earlier. And the action of this muscle is mainly that it stra straightens the pull of the long flexor tendons and it flexes the toes through the long tendons. Next, let's look at the lumbricals that you see right here. They arise from the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus muscle. The first lumbrical right here is unipennate, which means it arises from one side of the tendon whereas the rest are bipennate, that is, they arise from opposite sides of the tendon. So the first lumbrical that you see right here arises from the medial side of the first tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. So this is the first tendon of the flexor digitorum longus and it arises from its medial side. Now the second lumbrical right here arises from adjacent sides of the first and second tendons of the flexor digitorum longus as you can see right here. The third lumbrical arises from the adjacent sides of the second and third lumbrical as you can see right here and finally the fourth lumbrical arises from the adjacent sides of the third and fourth tendons of the flexor digitorum longus muscle. Looking at the insertion of the lumbrical muscles here you can see the metatarsophalangeal joints of the lateral four toes. So the tendons of these lumbrical muscles pass forwards 
onto the medial sides of the metatarsophalangeal joints as you can see right here and they pass dorsally for the insertion onto the extensor expansion. Looking at its nerve supply, the first muscle is supplied by the medial plantar nerve and the other three are supplied by the deep branches of the lateral plantar nerve. We can remember it as the first one is lying medially, so it's supplied by the medial plantar nerve and the lateral three ones are supplied by the deep branches of the lateral plantar nerve. Finally, the action of the lumbricus is to maintain extension of the digits at the interphalangeal joints so that in walking and running, the toes do not buckle underneath. Finally, let's look at the flexor hallucis muscle. It originates from the posterior surface of the fibula. In this diagram, you can see the fibula and its posterior surface. So the flexor hallucis longus originates from the lower three-fourths of the posterior surface of the fibula and the adjoining uh, interosseous membrane. Now the flexor hallucis longus inserts onto the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe. It inserts onto its plantar surface. It is mainly supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that it is a plantar flexor of the big toe and it also helps in maintaining the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Before we move on to the muscles of the third layer of the sole of the foot, let's concise what we learned in the muscles of the second layer. So under the flexor digitorum longus, we learned that it originates from the upper two-thirds of the medial part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the soleal line. It inserts into the distal phalanx of second to fifth digits. So it divides into four tendons and each of it is inserted into the distal phalanx of the second to fifth digit. Its main supply is by the tibial nerve and its action is plantar flexion of the lateral four toes and the ankle and it maintains the medial longitudinal arch. Talking about the flexor digitorum accessorius, we learned that it arises by two heads, one is the medial and another is the lateral head. The medial head is large and fleshy, it arises from the medial concave surface of the calcaneus. The lateral head is smaller and it arises from the ten, uh, smaller and tendinous and it arises from the calcaneus from the front of the lateral tubercle. Its insertion is into the lateral side of the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. The main nerve supply is from the lateral plantar nerve and its action is that it straightens the pull of the long flexor tendons and it flexes the toes through the long tendons. So about the lumbricals, we learned that it arises from the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus. The first lumbrical is unipennate, the others are bipennate. The first lumbrical arises from the medial side of the first tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. The second arises from the adjacent sides of the first and second tendons of the flexor digitorum longus. The third arises from the adjacent sides of the second and third, whereas the fourth arises from the adjacent sides of the third and fourth tendons of the flexor digitorum longus. Looking at its insertion, the tendons pass forwards on the medial sides of the metatarsophalangeal joints of the lateral four toes and it moves dorsally for the insertion into the extensor expansion. Looking at the nerve supply, the first muscle is supplied by the medial plantar nerve and the other three are supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve. Its main action is to maintain extension of the digits at the interphalangeal joints so that in walking and running, the toes do not buckle under. Finally, we had looked at the flexor hallucis longus. It arises from the lower three-fourths of the posterior surface of the fibula and the adjoining interosseous membrane. Its insertion is onto the plantar surface of the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe. Its nerve supply is by the tibial nerve and its main action is it is a plantar flexor of the big toe and the ankle joint and it also maintains the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Now let's learn about the muscles of the third layer of the sole of the foot. So we mainly have three muscles, that is the flexor hallucis brevis that you see right here, the adductor hallucis muscle and the flexor digiti minimi brevis muscle right here. So looking at the flexor hallucis brevis, it arises from a Y-shaped tendon. 
which has a lateral limb and a medial limb. The lateral limb originates from the medial part of the plantar surface of the cuboid bone, behind the groove for the peroneus longus and from the adjacent side of the lateral cuneiform bone. Now the medial limb that you see right here is a direct continuation of the tendon of the tibialis posterior muscle. As you can see right here, this is the medial limb. Now looking at its insertion, the muscle splits into medial and lateral parts, each of which ends in a tendon. Now each tendon is inserted into the corresponding side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. So here you can see it is divided into a medial part and it inserts into the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe and here is the lateral part which inserts into the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. Its nerve supply is from the medial, medial plantar nerve and its action is that it flexes the proximal phalanx of the MTP of the great toe that is a metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe right here. Next we have the adductor hallucis muscle. It originates from two heads, that is the oblique head right here and the transverse head right here. So the oblique head originates from the bases of the second, third and fourth metatarsals, as you can see right here, the second, third and fourth metatarsals, and from the sheath of the tendon of the peroneus longus. Looking at the transverse head, it is small and arises from the deep metatarsal ligament as well as the plantar ligaments of the metatarsophalangeal joints of the third, fourth and fifth digits. Right here you can see the third, fourth and fifth digits. Now the adductor hallucis inserts onto the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the big toe in common with the lateral tendon of the flexor hallucis brevis that we had learned earlier. So both of these heads they insert onto the medial surface of the base of the proximal phalanx as you can see right here. So it is supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve as it is mostly on the lateral side. So by the lateral plantar nerve and the action of the adductor hallucis is the adduction of the great toe towards the second toe. It also helps in maintaining the transverse arches of the foot. Finally, looking at the flexor digiti minimi brevis muscle right here, it originates from the base of the fifth metatarsal bone right here and the sheath of the tendons of the peroneus longus and it inserts into the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the little toe as you can see right here. Its nerve supply is by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve and its action is that it flexes the proximal phalanx at the metatarsophalangeal joint of the little toe right here. Before we move on to the muscles of the fourth layer of the sole of the foot, let's concise the things that we learnt under the muscles of the third layer. So we learned that the flexor hallucis brevis arises by a Y-shaped tendon that is a lateral limb originates from the medial part of the plantar surface of the cuboid bone behind the groove for the peroneus longus and from the adjacent side of the lateral cuneiform bone. The medial limb is a direct continuation of the tendon of the tibialis posterior into the foot. Talking about its insertion, the muscle splits into medial and lateral parts, each of which ends in a tendon. Each tendon is inserted into the corresponding side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. The nerve supply is by the medial plantar nerve and its action is that it flexes the proximal phalanx at the metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe. Moving on to the adductor hallucis, it arises by two heads, one is the oblique head and the other is the transverse head. The oblique head is large and it arises from the bases of the second, third and fourth metatarsals. The transverse head is small and it arises from the deep metatarsal ligament and the plantar ligaments of the metatarsophalangeal joints of the third, fourth and fifth toes. Now its insertion is on the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the big toe in common with the lateral tendon of the flexor hallucis brevis. 
It is supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve and its action is mainly the adductor of the great toe towards the second toe and it also maintains the transverse arches of the foot. Then we learnt about the flexor digita minimi brevis. Its origin is from the base of the fifth metatarsal bone and the sheath of the tendon of the peroneus longus. Its insertion is onto the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the little toe and its nerve supply is by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve and finally its action is that it flexes the proximal phalanx at the metatarsophalangeal joint of the little toe. Moving on to the muscles of the fourth layer of the sole of the foot, we mainly have four muscles. First is the plantar interosei, then we have the dorsal interosei, we have the tibialis posterior and the peroneus longus muscle. Looking at the plantar interosei, it originates from the bases and medial sides of the third, fourth and fifth metatarsals as you can see right here. It inserts into the medial sides and bases of the proximal phalanges and dorsal digital expansions of the third, fourth and fifth digits. Now looking at its nerve supply, the first and second lumbricals are supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve and the third is supplied by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. The action of the plantar interosia is that it works as the adductors of the third, fourth and fifth toes. It also acts as a flexor of the metatarsophalangeal joints and the extensor of the interphalangeal joints of the third, fourth and fifth toes. Moving on to the dorsal interosia, they originate from the adjacent sides of the metatarsal bones as you can see right here and they insert into the bases of the proximal phalanges and dorsal digital expansions of the toes. So here you can see they are inserting onto the bases of the proximal phalanges. So looking at the first dorsal interosia right here, it inserts onto the medial side of the second toe right here. The second dorsal interosia inserts onto the lateral side of the second toe. The third dorsal interosia inserts onto the lateral side of the third toe right here and the fourth inserts on the lateral side of the fourth toe right here. Looking at its nerve supply, the first, second and third dorsal interosei are supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve and the fourth dorsal interosei is supplied by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So for the plantar interosei, we learned that they act as the adductors of the toe, but here the dorsal interosei act as the abductors of the toe. The first and second cause medial and lateral abduction of the second toe. There is a first here and the second dorsal interosei cause the medial and lateral abduction of the second toe, whereas the third and fourth dorsal interosei cause the abduction of the third and fourth toes. Now looking at the tibialis posterior muscle, it originates from the posterior surface of the leg bones, that is the tibia and the fibula, and it inserts onto the tuberosity of the navicular bone as you can see right here. Its nerve supply is by the tibial nerve and its action, action is a plantar flexion of the ankle, that is downwards. Finally, we have the peroneus longus muscle. It originates from the upper part of the lateral surface of the fibula bone, as you can see right here, and it inserts onto the base of the first metatarsal bone. Its nerve supply is by the superficial peroneal nerve, and its action is that it is an everter of the foot. Finally, concising the muscles of the fourth layer of the sole of the foot, we learned about the plantar interosia. It originates from the bases and medial sides of the third, fourth and fifth metatarsals. It inserts onto the medial sides of the bases of the proximal phalanges and the dorsal digital expansions of the third, fourth and fifth toes. Its nerve supply is the first and second plantar interosia is supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve and third is supplied by the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. Its action is that they are adductors of the third, fourth and fifth toes, they are flexor of the metatarsophalangeal and extensor of the interphalangeal 
joints of the third, fourth, and fifth toes. Looking at the dorsal enterocere, we learn that it originates from the adjacent sides of the metatarsal bones. Its insertion is that it inserts onto the basis of the proximal phalanges and the dorsal digital expansion of the toes. That is, the first dorsal enterocere inserts on the medial side of the second toe. The second dorsal enterocere inserts on the lateral side of the second toe. The third inserts on the lateral side of the third toe and the fourth inserts on the lateral side of the fourth toe. Its nerve supply is by the first, second and third dorsal enterocere is supplied by the deep branch whereas the fourth is supplied by the superficial branch. The action of the dorsal enterocere is that they are the abductors of the toe from the axis of the second toe. The first and second cause medial and lateral abduction of the second toe whereas the third and fourth dorsal enterocere cause the abduction of the third and fourth toes. We learned that the tibialis posterior muscle originates from the posterior surface of leg bones. It inserts into the tuberosity of the navicular bone. It's supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that it is a plantar flexor of the ankle. The peroneus longus muscle originates from the upper part of the lateral surface of the fibula. It inserts onto the base of the first metatarsal. Its nerve supply is by the superficial peroneal nerve and its action is that it is an everter of the foot. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of the muscles of the sole of the foot, visit my website, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.